All right, so um, this is the Panasonic 16-35 F4. And this is the Panasonic S5. And this is what I've been reading for a while. It comes with this lens, the 20 to 60. Um, it's very interesting because I wrote a review about that new, like, I think it's a 28 to 50 or something like that. I forgot what it was for Sony. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, no one should really buy this lens. No one should pay attention to it. And I got some comments saying like, Oh, you know, Panasonic came up with this 20 to 60. Believe it or not, this lens isn't too bad. And I'll be working on my review actually for this week. But back to the camera. So, Brett, I'm seeing very similar things to you in terms of autofocus performance. And it's incredibly, incredibly sad. Yep. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, Panasonic. You've had a lot of time to get your firmware updates out there, but it's it's just not doing it. And I don't understand why. Like in some ways, Nikon jumped ahead of them. And I'm just like, guys, like I wasn't expecting Nikon to get ahead of you guys. Right. Um, and I've talked to Panasonic about this and they're like, yeah, you know, sometimes it really depends on like the motors and the lens and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's really crazy because... I thought, and you know, I've had this theory a while ago for Micro Four Thirds. Olympus mm -hmm. and Panasonic, they use the same mount, but I feel like they always find ways to subtly screw each other over. So you only have to buy into their system. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I felt the same garbage is happening with the L mount in some ways. Like Leica owns the L mount. Leica, Sigma, and Panasonic can do it. But according to the standards, they're not just sharing the mount, they're sharing exposure information and autofocus algorithm information. Mm -hmm. And what I've been told from Panasonic is it really varies in the motors and the lenses, like Leica's lenses might not be the same as Panasonic's and as Sigma's. So that's why you'll get varying autofocus performance. But it seems like each camera focuses best with their own lenses. So, you know, the system is still new. I still have to do a lot of testing on it, mm -hmm. but we're going to see. Um, either way, back to the S5. So this is Panasonic's smallest full-frame camera, and it is incredibly small. It feels very good in the hand. You know, every time I brought the S1 or the S1R up on camera, I remember you would be like, man, that is a chunky boy. I'm like, yep. Yeah, it's a chunky <laughs> boy, but this is pretty nice and it's pretty small. Like here, you can see with my hand, it completely conforms to my fingers. And then I just shoot like that if I want to. So it's overall very nice. So let's uh, take an ergonomic walkthrough. Actually, first off, before I do that, I should probably bring up my notes from my review that I will be mm -hmm. writing. Um, I started the review and then I got away through it and I'm like, you know, I don't really think that it makes sense for me to publish it yet until the raw file support is there. Right. So I'm going to bring up my notes from the review. And okay. So my pros, it's nice feeling. It has dual card slots. That's what everyone wanted to begin with. And it doesn't have that garbage where it's like CF express and then, uh, SDHC or XC or whatever we're on. I forgot what we're on. Um, it's got dual SD cards. That's, That's pretty good. awesome. Yes. Yep. There's image stabilization in there and it's very solid. Good. Uh, take note, G G100. <laughs> <laughs> it also feels very good in the hand. Um, they're beautiful JPEG output. I really, mm -hmm. really love it, um, especially with like the L monochrome settings. I've always loved the L monochrome settings, but right. L monochrome full frame is mwah. Fantastic. Mwah. Yes. Uh, I'll show you images a little bit later. High ISO output is also very solid. I don't know the full capabilities of it yet, though, because again, mm -hmm. I don't have raw file support. But in JPEGs, they are very nice. I have some images with RNI films presets over them and then just mm -hmm. other 6400 images. And you'll see that in a bit. Cool. Um, live composite. You know, you're an Olympus user. You know how yeah. fun that thing is. It's amazing. Yeah. 
and now you have it in full frame. And I have an image that I did with it. Uh, I think the limit is only up to like three hours or something like that, but it's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Uh, Panasonic's menus, we have the same menu system. They're, you know, we've talked about this before. Hasselblad has the best menus mm-hmm. of anyone. Then it's Canon, and then I'd say it's Panasonic. Would you agree with me on that, or would you say Fujifilm or Sony is better or something like that? Yeah, I, I would probably put Fujifilm and Panasonic on the same level there. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? You put Fujifilm up there? Yeah, I like Fujifilm's menus. Okay. Probably <laughs> because of the not... XC200, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't like them when they're not touch compatible, but the touch compatible version is really good. Yes, I, that I will agree with you on. Yeah. Um, I adore the shutter sound on this. Let me let me show you uh, what a real shutter sounds like, Brett. <laughs> Not a uh, some other sort of shutter. You hear that? Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, like much feel- better than the Fisher Price toy I had in my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it feels like it's slightly dampened, but also in some ways it feels like you remember like the first generation of Micro Four Thirds cameras, like the pen. Like that thing yep. had this beautiful shutter and there were all these posts like comparing it to Leicas and stuff. Yep, I remember. Yeah, it feels almost like that. And it sounds Fantastic. almost like that. Um, Believe it or not, even though I'm getting slow, like it's not really slow to autofocus and low light. It's just inaccurate. Mm-hmm. Um, Despite that, this is the fastest focusing, uh, focusing uh L mount camera I've used. Good. Yeah. Um, and I've used it with not only this pro lens, but I've also used it with the kit lens and I've used it with the Panasonic 24 to 70 F 2.8, which I'm being shot with right now on the Panasonic S one. Gotcha. Um, talked about L monochrome D. Okay. Now my cons, um, even though this autofocus is much better than what Panasonic had when it first came out, the face detection just isn't always there. And that's in low light and that's in good light. And I'll be talking about this and I'll be showing it off actually. Um, Multiple exposure mode and how it's used is a little bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. I really wish there were a little bit more versatility. I know that I'm probably in the minority of people that will use multiple exposure mode and for like projects and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. i adore that like i think you've seen some of my multiple exposure stuff brett yeah absolutely yeah it's fun and i feel like more people should be doing it instead of spending time in photoshop um battery life is much wow i'm smelling smoke okay now my computer is fine (laughs) um someone's probably barbecuing outside Battery life is much improved over the S1 um, and the S1R. The S1R and the S1, like, I would use them for, like, three hours, and suddenly they die, and they'd be like, what's going on? Wow. Yeah, but this is uh, pretty awesome. Good. I'm still smelling smoke. I'm just making sure that nothing is overheating. No, it's fine. Okay. Um, focus speaking. That's another thing. A lot of these mirrorless cameras, they're not so great with focus speaking. Canon is fantastic, like two mm-hmm. thumbs up. Uh, Sony has gotten better, and focus speaking with this has actually really improved. I okay. uh, I adapted a Leica, no, three different Leica M- L mount lens, no, M mount lenses onto this camera, and the focus speaking was actually very accurate. I still had to magnify in and see what's going on, but it worked out pretty well. Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds okay. like they've made some pretty good updates so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me show you. So this is it with the kit lens. I'm going to switch to the 16 to 35 Pro lens. Um, that's what I was using for a good portion of the time on it. Um, I was also using this kit lens. Um, I rarely use the 24 to 70 to 8 because I'm not sure how many people will buy that lens with this. Right. Um, but I do think that there are audiences with for that i just think maybe they'll reach for the primes more than anything else Mm -hmm. so here's the 16 to 35 on there it's still pretty good size overall you know i could still shove it into a camera bag no problem yeah yeah so ergonomically speaking so let's talk about this thing feels great really nice grip um you have a drive dial up here which is really nice 
Uh, you have that characteristic red button there, mm -hmm. which is also very good. One dial for uh, shutter speed. This one is for aperture. Nice. Um, you have white balance, you have ISO, and you have exposure compensation over here. Now what that means is if you're an aperture priority and you twist one of these dials, you're going to be mm -hmm. changing the aperture instead of one of them being set to aperture or one of them being set to exposure compensation. So you right. have to specifically press the exposure compensation button for that. Um, and I guess that works. It's just, you know, other systems, it's like you have a dial here or yeah. you can just do it. It's um, just an extra step. It's just an extra step, but it's fine. Yeah. You know what I am liking though? Nikon did this thing where with the S5 and you know, that's over there and behind me, they mm -hmm. took away the little perforation on the ISO button. Does the G100 have that? No. The ISO button, it doesn't have it? No, because the ISO button's on the control dial on the back. Oh, okay, that's why. So yeah. with every other system with ISO buttons, you probably realize this, a lot of people probably don't, you'll feel like a little perforation on it. And that's mm -hmm. how you can find it in the dark. Um, it's there and it's wonderful. Nikon Good. took it off and I'm like, why guys? Yeah. Why? I sent a, I sent an email to our reps. I'm like, hey, could you ask Japan? And they're like, they probably might not get back to you. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm that's just, cool. <laughs> you know, enjoy my little perforated ISO button here instead there you go exactly um let's go to the back so the back of this camera uh first off the screen does a flippy thing like that which is wonderful mm -hmm. very useful a lot of the time for uh power saving i just shot with it like that you know because i don't really use this very often yep um you know you've got another dial right here you've got uh a really nice joystick over here joystick mm-hmm Panasonic's really nice thing about controlling like continuous focus, single focus, and all that stuff, they put it all on one spot. And that's what mm -hmm. right here. So you have this little dial around this button here. It can go single, continuous, or manual focus. And uh -huh. the S1, the S1R have that too. And then that's you can right. choose the autofocus type here. Yeah. Um, LVF, you know, it changes the different modes that you have over there. The right. viewfinder is also very nice. And, you know, going straight into build quality, this thing is weather sealed. I have images. Uh, I've been changing up the style of my own lifestyle product images. And, you know, I threw some water on the thing. Mm -hmm. Survived, no problem shooting. Um, I didn't shoot with a lot, admittedly, in the rain because we haven't really had a lot of rain or when we have, I've just been too busy doing a whole bunch of other things mm -hmm. instead. Um, but it can take a beating and that's pretty awesome. Um, also just because it's so much more lightweight than the S1, I actually want to sling it around me and keep shooting. I was going to say that camera, I think is smaller than the GH5 and the G9, the micro four thirds cameras. Yes, it actually is. That's a great That's, point. That blows my mind. Yeah. It's yeah. smaller and I believe it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And you know, we talk about these numbers, but you don't really understand it, you know, until you actually try it on. And like, you know, I've used the S1 for a long time. I've used the S1R for a long time mm -hmm. and I have like a really nice strap on it. And I'm like, man, I don't want to carry this thing around. It's so heavy. It reminds me of 5D Mark II. Like, yeah. I'm not 20 something anymore. I'm 33. Um, and you know, that's not old, but still, um, <laughs> I just, you know, Bathe with bathe and then put on copious amounts of coconut oil to look young. But yeah. Um, but either way, like this strap, like there's nothing on it to like really cushion my shoulder, but I can just walk around and shoot with it. It's very comfortable to shoot yeah. with and walk. I've walked six miles with this camera, Brett. That's crazy. And I've had yeah. no problems. It's awesome. It's fantastic it, for walking around. It makes such a huge difference. And that's one of the things that, you know, I love about Micro Four Thirds. So the fact that they've done this with a full frame is just amazing to me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? So we talked about the, oh, ease of use. That's what we got to talk about now. So first off, as we talked about, you know, Panasonic's menu system is really awesome. And for those mm -hmm. of you that have never seen Panasonic's menu system, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll demonstrate it right now. So you got the menu right there. I'm going to bring this up. So it's, on par with my face and I'm going to get rid of the glare that way. And there what you go. can do 
is you can just go ahead and you can cycle through all these different sections. And then you can click through and be like, hey, I want to do that or that or that. And you can navigate very quickly. Like right now I'm in red camera mode. And then I'm like, hey, I want to control the flash settings. Cool, I'm there. And it's very quick and easy to navigate. It's not as fast as cannons. Right. Like cannons, it's like really agile and quick. And that's because Canon puts the menus over along the top instead of on the side. Yep. Um, but, you know, they adhere to the old Steve Jobs philosophy where you should be able to get to everything you want within two clicks. Like, remember the iPod? Like, oh, yeah. you were able to get to anything you wanted in two clicks. Um, and that's the same thing here with uh, the Panasonic S1. It's pretty awesome. Right. Um, otherwise, in terms of ease of use, I haven't really had any major problems. Like, but I've used the Panasonic system before. I know a lot of the ins and outs. I think mm -hmm. it's pretty simple to use. Um, you know, there's the there's the joystick that's really nice and lets you like choose the focusing point wherever you want it, and that works pretty well along with the autofocus in good lighting. And if you're shooting yeah. like landscapes or something wide or something like that, it'll be great. For street photography, not so much, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, and again, that's because of the autofocus tracking. To that extent, I'm not totally sure I would use it for photojournalistic reasons, like indoors, uh, in low light and all that stuff. I feel like I'd probably still miss a lot. Mm -hmm. um it might be better with the 51 4 but i don't have that lens on me and that's a chonker of a lens like that thing oh, yeah. is massive um the 24 to 72 8 even with that i had a little bit of issues and i'll show you that mm -hmm. uh in just a moment let's uh it's so frustrating it really is man it really is it's so sad too i'm gonna set up the images from the S5 review. All right. And I'm going to open these up in preview. And we're going to go through a lot. I'm using a lot more than you did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. Oh, wow. It's opening up in two different things. Um, okay. Share screen. And now share this. Can you see that, Brett? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So this was a test I was doing for uh, shutter speeds. So this was at uh, 0.2 seconds. And like looking at the whole frame, you won't really see a lot of camera shape. But if you really zoom in, I was focusing on that hat area, you'll see just a bit of it. Yeah, it's not too bad at all, though. No, it's yeah. not too bad. And honestly, I still think it's usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to move this thing over here so I can get out of zoom of that. Okay, cool. Um, so walking around, you know, Panasonic's full frame colors are really beautiful, especially in vivid. Um, and, you know, in portrait mode and all that kind of stuff, I'll show those off a little bit later on. But you know what I'm noticing? Like with a 20 to 60, the colors just aren't there as much as they are with the Lumix Pro lenses. Right. And I think that that is something that's very key to talk about. And more reviewers should be talking about. Like mm -hmm. Panasonic has all these Lumix Pro lenses and these Lumix S lenses. But the Lumix Pro lenses, like the colors are mwah. I remember yeah, the 51.4, it was like, oh my God, it's beautiful. It's amazing just how much difference it can make. Yeah, and it's crazy too, because like Panasonic and Leica, they've had this relationship for a really long time. And like Leica was really great about lenses and cameras and all that stuff. But like Panasonic lenses have really caught up, man. That's good to hear. That really is. Yeah. And, is not... you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, they're going to be a heck of a lot more affordable than, than the Leica counterparts. So. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, these are still with the 2060. That's just me just walking around my neighborhood. I'm in Woodside, Queens. And this is uh, one of my best friends, Kevin. Uh, we were getting, we do this thing every uh, Friday to keep each other sane, where because we live like a mile away from each other, um, mm -hmm. we actually go out for lunch or breakfast every Friday. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So we went to this one uh, like uh, kebab place 
um, and we were eating as much as we possibly could. This is obviously not kebab. This is a really nice Mustang. That is a really nice car. Yeah. Um, I love those colors as well, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this thing rocks for colors. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and even for skin tones, like, there are more images I'll show you later on, like, just how great the skin tones are. Um, yeah, even with these, like, the 20 to 60, like, I still feel these are better than Micro Four Thirds in terms of color rendition, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's full frame, so that's what you get. Absolutely. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen, though, because this is a 24 megapixel sensor. You know, it's the same one that everyone's been using for a while now. Um, but I really want to see the way Panasonic rendered it differently on the S5 versus the S1. Ah, uh, yeah. Do they have uh, different image processes, do you know, or do they use the same? You know, that one I don't remember off the top of my head. I think they are slightly different image processors. Interesting. But either way, like, I can't really complain about these results. No, they look fantastic. Yeah, and imagine if, like, I had a Prime or something like that. Like, look at mm -hmm. this. Like, this is a 16 to 35, and I'm getting results like this. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, this is ISO 400. This is also 400. Uh, this is a neighborhood called Jackson Heights, not too far away from me. This is uh, 74th Street, also affectionately known as Little India. Um, uh. And, you know, it's beginning of October, but they have, like, these Christmas-type lights going on right now. And I've been wondering, I'm like... Say. Yeah, it's really early, man. I'm like, wow, Black Friday hasn't even come up. And I'm wondering if it's like, because there are so many different religions and nationalities and ethnicities in India um, and the subcontinent overall. So maybe like they're trying to celebrate a whole bunch of them together. I'm not sure. Interesting. Yeah. This I thought was just cool because, you know, the baby, uh, the puppy over here is just uh, going and it sort of looks like he's pulling it out of the ground, but he's not. It does. It's exactly what I was going to say. That's hilarious. Yeah, I probably should have gotten closer, but I was being very <laughs> careful because there were so many people going back and forth. Yeah. And like this guy wasn't wearing a mask, but she was. And yeah, you got to be careful on some shooting streets. Mm -hmm. um, this is an area called Forest Park, and you can go deep into it uh, in Queens, and you can completely forget that you're in New York City. Yeah, that, that almost looks like a, a, a park here in Oklahoma. Yeah, um, and it's crazy because I used to hang out here a lot growing up and like I've always wondered how this engine block got here. Like that's a mile into the forest. That, that's, the, that's the reminder that you're still in New York. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great reminder, yeah. Um, these are going around Woodside, my neighborhood once again. This is at 1 40th of a second. I know I have others uh, that are like slower and you know they'll come up eventually um mm -hmm. this is iso 200 at 1 50th of a second you know still getting some great colors overall this is my friend oh, brian man. uh this is a foreclosed property i just decided to peek in get a photo you know act like i'm urbexing there you go yeah exactly uh some mist and haze this is l monochrome Mm, that looks nice yeah it's so beautiful but like again i'm getting those really nice vivid colors like even with the flowers over here we're going to be going through a lot of images folks so stay tuned yeah, l monochrome they, again they just look so much better than the, than the g100 in terms of color rendition yeah crazy yeah absolutely and for anyone that doesn't know when you're in black and white you can still edit the color channels to get uh certain effects like you know a brighter green or a darker green or something like that mm -hmm. this is food dude like it does this with food that looks good thank what you is it? <laughs> uh that is um pan seared salmon uh with lettuce tomato raw garlic raw onions carrots uh and a sesame uh salad that looks good those yeah. colors are good. It makes it look really appetizing. Oh, thank you. I really mm. appreciate that. Um, I've been trying to eat healthier. Like, you know, I posted those images the other day and people are like, man, you look fit. And I'm like, you don't know this, but I had three slices of Sicilian pizza a couple oh, hours really? before that. <laughs> so, I gain yeah. weight just thinking about pizza. 
<laughs> <laughs> you know, still walking around Woodside, you know. Um, what I realized about this, you know, I said it was really, really lightweight, but even though the 20 to 60, I'm, I think it's an okay lens. Um, it's a great walk around lens. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's important. People will sit there, they'll shoot with this camera and this lens. And, you know, it, it's uh, the cameras are not something you're supposed to be like in your shelf or on your camera bag all the time. You know, you're supposed to sit there and walk around with the things. You know, it's your hobby right. or it's, you know, your profession. Um, this Definitely. is all monochrome again. Yeah, and that's just rendered beautifully. I love that. Yeah, I was told off the record that they were trying to make it look like a certain film, but they weren't telling me. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. like Tri X. And they're like, we're not going to say. I'm like, okay, cool. I can read between the lines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to get eventually to one of those images where I do like that painterly type effect that I like to do. Uh-huh. Um, but overall, man, like, you know, if you like walking around the forest and stuff like that, even the white balancing is very good. Yeah. Yeah, like, and you can tell that too because indoors you usually have like these mixed lighting situations, and it's still nailing the colors. I was going to say that looks pretty, pretty spot on. Yeah, it's very true to life. Uh, that's that really nice bokeh from these cameras mm-hmm. and these lenses, rather. Um, again, like even in what I oh, was ISO 400. 400 is like my go-to just because of like the film days and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm still able to get really nice dynamic range and colors out of this thing. It's pretty fantastic. Let me go yeah, through a little really bit is. more. Yeah, I did not walk on this uh, line. Just letting That's you guys good. know. Yes. <laughs> um, I tell everyone, but I was just like, you know what? Like, I'll just do it for the photos. I'll be safe. I used to walk along this. I've only ever seen a uh, train come once. And that's because like it's it's like one of those trash trains. Like it takes a whole lot of trash and they go very slowly. They tell gotcha. people to not really go in, in this area, but people go there all the time. No mm. one's ever been electrocuted. Um, either way, I still just, uh, we spent maybe three minutes and then I was like, no, let's get out of here. Get out the yeah. yeah. El monochrome again. Fantastic. Yeah, like I'm shaking my head at how beautiful this thing is. I just want to shoot in that all the time, I think. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's great. Um, especially on micro four thirds too, because I don't always feel like the color is always there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yep, dynamic that. Yeah, the dynamic range on this thing is pretty great. Like, look at this, it's getting all the details there and you yep. know, in the sky. More trees. I did a lot of shooting around the trees. Um, you know, this this doesn't look the most appetizing, but whatever, say la vie. I think I had this in standard or muted, though. Gotcha. Yeah. This is that yeah. painterly effect that I try to get. That looks good. Yeah. Um, ISO 100, one eighth of a second. Uh, just to demonstrate that to you guys, basically, um, I guess I'll show it later on, but basically you just shoot a really slow shutter speed while moving the camera and that's what you get Mm -hmm. uh this was not done with that effect um because everything is i was shooting with a slow shutter speed one thirteenth of a second purposely because i wanted to get the trail of the of the train here and that looks nice and sharp as well so that ibis really is kicking in doing a good job yeah it really is again that's one thirteenth of a second this is Mm -hmm. one thirtieth of a second this I decided I would just shoot because I was like, man, how often do you see people walking around in trench coats in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is kind of crazy. Whatever. Um, now we're getting into more ISO 6400 territory, and I'm going to zoom in just to show you guys what we're getting at. It's pretty clean. Yeah, that looks really pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to zoom out. There's going to be more samples of those, FYI. Um, this I just thought was nice and moody, so I was like, okay, cool. This didn't get his face, but also he was moving around a little bit. But this is still ISO 6400, mm-hmm. still, still very clean. clean, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that 24 megapixel sensor, man. Like, it's doing so great, even the colors at high ISOs. Like, this is still this is one quarter of a second at 6400. Wow. 
And yeah, I looks, still got no blur. That looks great. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so this is the problem I was talking about. So low light, I tried to get his face focused on the face behind. Actually, mm-hmm. no, it was telling me that it was focused on, on my friend Harish's face here. It didn't. Only then did I really look carefully and I got his face in focus. God, that's frustrating. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that we've experienced that over both both cameras, both Michael Four Thirds and the new S5 as well. Yeah, but I've always really also thought that like, you know, with darker skin people, it really doesn't always necessarily focus as well as it does with lighter skin people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of difficult to do. Um, you know, focusing again. Uh, okay, not the best. Here it was fine. This is my friend Kevin again. This is with the 24728. And these colors are wonderful. Yeah, they look really good. Those skin tones are great. Yeah. These are at ISO 6400. Am I zoomed all the way out? Yes, I am. Uh, and you would think that her eye is in focus and her face is in focus, but it's actually focusing like over here on her dress. Gotcha. Yeah. And I did a whole session with her. Uh, this is a model Asta that I met in one of the Facebook groups. And Mm -hmm. unfortunately it's focusing here instead of focusing on her eye, even though it was telling me, oh yeah, I'm going to focus on her face. That didn't happen. So going so through, we need to tell the camera that the face is up here, huh? Yeah, <laughs> basically that. Um, and these are using, uh, I wasn't using flash. I was using um, constant lighting in an umbrella. And I was gelling the light at one point too. Gotcha. Yeah. And then I had another lamp that like projects like stars to get this mm-hmm. effect. Um, but right. these are using presets, which, you know, if you're not p- pixel peeping, it looks pretty okay. But again, it it's focusing over here instead of on her face. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah. So I'm showing you this session because I really want to show you guys, like, sometimes it has a lot of problems focusing on the face in low light. Here, I think it got it. Yeah, that eye looks like it's in focus pretty, pretty well. Yeah, but even so, like, it's probably a little bit on the cheek or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, these are with presets from R&I, so these aren't looking the way they do right out of the camera. This was with the L monochrome. I figured I'd just mess around with it. This is me um, with the F2.8, and it got my eye, I feel. Yep. Yep, but nailed it on that one. Yeah. A um, little bit more on the glasses, though, but yeah. Here is live composite. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, so cool. I'm loving this feature. I love that it's on full frame, too. So on um, on this camera, does it kick out the final file as a JPEG or a RAW? Both. Ah, brilliant, because the their, their implementation of this so far in the Micro Four First cameras, they would only produce JPEG. Uh, JPEGs. So that's really good that it comes in raw too. I thought the EM13 does raws. Yeah, Olympus does on the Panasonic cameras that have it, the Micro Four Thirds ones, they only kick out the JPEG. Oh, gotcha. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more of the 20 to 60. Um, the colors on that, I'm just not really blown away by. Yeah, it's still not terrible though. No, it's, it's good. Yeah, I agree with you. It's not terrible. No. And that's it. I'm going to stop the share there. So, you know, overall, I think this is a very good camera. Oh, we got a question really quickly. Let me just look. Panasonic full frames uh, seems just like another line of practical, unexciting cameras. No sex appeal. I, in some ways, I agree with you. In some ways, I think that they're getting much better. Um, the really big ones, like the S1 and the S1R and the S1H are too big, but these aren't too bad. Like if they just improve the autofocus, I think that they actually have a very good audience for uh, the working journalist or the media professional, mm-hmm. um, especially for video. Uh, just curious, uh, 
Is Paul planning return to these sessions? Um, no, we actually let go of Paul recently. Um, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, let's go back to the Facebook chat where there is a comment. What's your review about the Canon 90D? Um, I'm trying to remember if we reviewed that camera. I don't think we did because uh, we said a while ago. Yeah. yeah, we did a first impressions. We're just not doing DSLRs anymore. We don't really feel it's very important anymore in the future. Mirrorless is the future. So, yeah. Um, the world doesn't need another good camera. We need something different. I completely Boy, agree with you there, Mike. I agree with that statement 100%. A thousand percent. I agree with yep. you on that. Um, I feel like also either camera companies need to majorly innovate, like a thousand times light years ahead of what they are right now, or they just need to embrace the fact that they're too slow and become luxury products and professional products. Yep. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Um, and that's really how I think the camera market will come back or survive. Like, I mean, I've talked about it in regards to the watch market. Like the watch market's mm -hmm. like, you know, I usually have like an actual watch on me. All of mine are downstairs right now. Um, yeah. Either way, like, will people want to buy this camera? It's it's a fairly attractive price point. What's the price point on this thing again? Eighteen ninety nine, I think, isn't it? Uh, that actually makes sense. Panasonic S five. Uh, with a lens? No, Adorama has it for what's Adorama's got it for? Uh, no, body only. It's nineteen ninety seven ninety nine. I'm not sure, man. Yeah, like, that's that's pushing it. Yeah, like this is the camera they should have launched with. Mm -hmm. I don't think they should have launched with the S1 and the S1R and the S1H. Like, those are good cameras. Don't get me wrong. They're too big. Right. Um, they should have launched the really high-end pro model a little bit later on, but they should have launched, like, this middle product first. And I think that, you know, if they had the better autofocus and all that stuff, more people would have picked up L-mount. I wonder how many more people would have migrated from their micro four thirds cameras to a full frame camera that's the same size as the g9 as well yeah no because I agree that to me is what it seems like panasonic is trying to do now they know people like these smaller cameras and they've got this micro four thirds base that maybe they want to move away from in the future and this is the camera for that yeah no i agree with you about that i feel like micro four thirds also has a place for video but also this thing mm -hmm. does great video too yeah and yeah, I mean, I'm being shot with the Panasonic S1 right now. And then, you know, I'm going to move and it keeps getting my face in focus. It's doing great. Yeah, it's keeping up. Yeah. Um, so like, why go micro four thirds in that case? And I feel like, you know, wildlife, that makes sense. And in some ways, street photography, that makes sense. But the tracking isn't there for street photography. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's not to totally diss Micro Four Thirds. Like, there's something to be said for their size, but it's now about time that Micro Four Thirds gets even smaller. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you think Micro Four Thirds will have over full frame is the size of lenses. Yeah. Um, I mean, even with the S5 being as small as it is, those lenses are still pretty, pretty big. It's yeah. going to add a lot of weight to, to the user in the end. Yeah, no. Um, but they're pretty lightweight, not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me look. Uh, another question. What would you tell someone not locked into a system already? Why Panasonic over the others? <sighs> How can we answer this? Mm, that's a good question. So let's let's go down the list. What advantages does Panasonic have over Canon? Maybe some video. But even with that, like the R5 is great. Yeah. And the, the R6 R5 is and great. the R6. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're better run for autofocusing too. And better IBIS. Yeah. It's a tough sell. Yeah. Um, Panasonic is a slightly lower price point than Canon. Yep. Um, their lenses are smaller, but, you know, arguably, I'd say Canon is really the most innovative lens maker right now in mirrorless. Yeah. I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah. Um, so nothing really over Canon. 
Um, Nikon. <sighs> Nikon's catching up, man. Like in some ways, they're better than Panasonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the S5. You know, I've been using it behind me. I really like that thing. Um, still not the level of Sony and autofocusing on Sony, Canon, and Pan- Fujifilm. Uh, but that's a tough sell as well, too. Um. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about the weight and the build quality. They're all really good. As, as like, you know, if Panasonic keep on innovating by bringing features like life comp to their full frame line, that's going to be a differentiator between the others because no one else is doing that. Yeah, I agree with you about that. Yeah. Okay, so that's Nikon. Sony. Sony's got a very, very well-built system, man. You're not going to beat Sony in this case. Um, Fujifilm. You know, some people will say full frame, but Fujifilm embraces APS-C and uh, medium format very, very well. Yeah. Um, it's a very well optimized platform because that's just what they do. Yeah, there's something about the character of Fujifilm images, like you're not beating them. Um, a lot of my best product photos are shot with Fujifilm cameras. Um, mm-hmm. People sit there and they're like, man, these are gorgeous. So... Um, Olympus. Why would you go? Olympus and Micro Four Thirds is a lot better built in terms of uh, the build quality. Like you can run those things under waterfall and they'll be fine. Yep. Um, what else? You know, uh, more lenses. Yeah. The I image quality. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think Olympus colors are a lot nicer on their Micro Four Thirds cameras than Panasonic's. Yes, but versus the S5, I feel like the S5 yeah. is better. Yep. Yeah. Um, the S5 also does much better prints. I've been doing mm-hmm. those. Leica. Um, that's where, you know, I feel like they will probably have an advantage. Um, with the Leica M's, you know, if you buy an M, uh, you buying an M because you want the M. Um, right. Those things are fantastic. They're small. They're really great. Uh, the SL, the SL is better built, has the uh, 47 megapixel sensor, I think it is, or the 45 megapixel mm-hmm. sensor. That thing has the most high detailed, high ISO images I have ever seen. So you're not beating that thing at all. Right. Um, but it's also more expensive. It's a it's a completely different breed of camera. Mm-hmm. Um, over the Sigma FP, I don't like the Sigma FP, man. Even people <laughs> that, you know, I've been doing a lot of research by going to these Facebook groups. Even people that use the Sigma FP don't use L mount lenses. They're adapting it with Leica lenses or something like that. They're just too big for that little camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So Panasonic, it's a really tough sell, Mike. It's a great question. Um, but it's not bad, you know. It's it's like you were saying with the Nikon uh, Z50. It's nice. It's just I don't know who would buy this. Yeah, yeah. Another um, thing they need, they got to expand their lens lineup. That's going to be one of the biggest things to get people into the system. Yeah, and you know the other thing that really annoys me about the L Mount Alliance, they don't share a hot shoe. Really. Yeah, Panasonic uses the Olympus hot shoe and Leica uses their own hot shoe they've been using for years. That's stupid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, okay, <laughs> fine. If I buy Panasonic and I buy my Leica and I use Pro Photo Lights, I can't get the same TTL from right. both com- companies. That's crazy. It's asinine. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Um. So I don't know, man. It's a tough sell. Um, But it's not a bad camera. I think it's very good. It's just, you know, we're going to have to see more innovations and Mm -hmm. we're going to have to see something that makes it really stand out versus the others. But, you know, that said, again, it's very small. It's very lightweight. Um, I was going to say it's the smallest camera out there. It's the smallest SLR style camera out there um, for full frame, but it's not the smallest full frame camera out there. You know, there's the Sigma FP still. There's the yep. really nice uh, Sony a7C. So you can go smaller. Um, 
Yeah, man. It, it's a tough sell once again. Let me check Facebook again, see if there's any comments. Uh, nothing more, it looks like. 